Minnesota's fruit and vegetable farmers are a critical part of our local food system and care deeply about providing the safest, highest quality food for their customers. Good food safety practices start on the farm and help protect public health and support a strong, sustainable local food system. One way you can keep your produce and customers safe is by regularly testing your farm's well water. Why test your farm's water? If your well is contaminated, it might contain pathogens, which include bacteria like E. coli and salmonella, which make people sick. People might get sick from drinking the water or by eating produce that was in contact with the water. You can't see or smell the pathogens or test for them yourself. Surface waters like ponds are considered to be the highest risk to produce safety since their quality can be highly variable. Surface waters are susceptible to contamination from animals and other sources. Groundwater sources, like wells, tend to be less at risk than surface water. However, the risk of contamination is still present. In this video, we will show you how to take a water sample from your farm's well, what to test for, and how often to test. Generic E. coli is the only organism farms are required to test their water sources for in the Food Safety Modernization Act Produce Safety Rule. This test is also required for a USDA GAP audit. You can test for other things like nitrates, nitrites, or other heavy metals, but generic E. coli is all that's required. It is what is known as an indicator organism. If it is present in water, it means that fecal contamination is getting into the well somehow, maybe through a cracked liner, a leaking septic, or runoff from nearby animals. Tell the lab that you are interested in testing your agricultural water for generic E. coli. It is recommended that you get an enumerated count, meaning the results will indicate how much E. coli is present. First, call ahead to the lab you will use for the testing. The lab will send you collection bottles and instructions. Read and follow these directions carefully. Write your farm's information and the sample ID number on the collection bottle. It is best to collect your sample as close to the source as possible. You might also need to collect a sample from the end of the distribution line to see if there is contamination in the line. Here we are collecting a sample from the well hydrant before any hoses or distribution lines. Before collecting your sample, clean the faucet with diluted bleach or alcohol to remove any potential contamination. Then, open the hydrant and allow the water to run for one or two minutes, or as indicated on the instructions from the lab. Your goal is to flush out any stagnant water that has been sitting in the lines, so you may need to flush for a longer time if you have a longer line from the well to the sampling point. Carefully remove the plastic seal from the bottle and remove the cap. Hold the cap by the outside to avoid contamination. It is important that you do not touch or otherwise contaminate the inside of the bottle or cap. The bottle might have powder or a capsule in it. Do not rinse or remove this powder. Fill the sample bottle with water to the 100 milliliter fill line. You can go a little over the 100 milliliter line, but do not allow the bottle to overflow. Screw the lid on tightly to prevent leakage. Refrigerate or cool the sample until you are ready to send it to the laboratory, such as in a small cooler with ice packs. Make sure that the sample does not freeze. Complete the submission form, including your farm address, name, and the collection location, date, and time. Pack the sample on ice and send it to the laboratory via courier or hand deliver it in a cooler within the sampling window indicated on the instructions, which is often 24 to 30 hours. Test well water at least once a year, at the beginning of your growing season. Test surface water more often, at least three times a year, but it is recommended to test this water quarterly. If your farm is covered by the FSMA Produce Safety Rule, the rule requires testing, but know that the number of tests and type of tests required are not finalized and are subject to change. Remember to keep the records of the water test results with your food safety plan documents. Many buyers ask to see a copy of a recent water test, and it is required for a gap audit. In Minnesota, there are a number of labs that can provide these tests. Labs can be private or county operated. A complete list of certified laboratories is available from the State Department of Health webpage. What do the lab results mean? If your result indicates that you do have some E. coli in well water, 
it means that the well or distribution system is compromised in some way and that fecal contamination is present. These germs can make people sick. Depending on the levels, corrective action may be necessary, including disinfection of the well. Inspect the well for cracks or damage, or check for sources of contamination in surface water. The well can be cleaned through shock chlorination. Talk with a well drilling company about this process. Discontinue use of the water source and retest water more until results are within acceptable ranges. The FISMA Produce Safety Rule says that water used for post-harvest uses, like hand washing and rinsing vegetables, should have zero detectable E. coli. Water used for irrigation and field uses can have some E. coli present. There are many local resources available to you if you have E. coli present in your well water. See here for more information on the FISMA Water Testing Labs in Minnesota and the MDA Produce Safety Program. <laughs>